This tier is fun facts many players would know already, but may have forgotten or isn't closely related to the main mechanics of the game. Customizable blue cards for Shallot has always been a permanent tool for the player to utilize as you play around with animations, card costs, area of effect and passives alongside them. Which questions if there will be a customizable green card for Shallot in the future? Back in the golden era of the game, or when the game has aired its first year of release, there were three go-to strong characters to play in ranked battles. That being Purple Super Saiyan Broly, Blue Bardock and Red Super Gogeta. It was the most famous meta in the game and possibly the longest lasting as Blue Bardock's critical passive is still news to this day. So technically the Holy Trinity can still be viable three years later. Of course the game is called Dragon Ball Legends, but many will not know about Dragon Ball Z Legends. Another localized name would be Dragon Ball Z The Legend. It is an old PlayStation game released in 1996. It is a typical Dragon Ball Z game with traditional fighting mechanics but holds some similarities to Dragon Ball Legends, such as a 3 vs 3 battle system gameplay and seamless switching capabilities. This event happened around the first year anniversary of the game, where it held a competitive tournament of players in Las Vegas. It was extremely successful showcasing two never seen before units, Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Vegito, with an edited intro animation like an ultra. It was basically the outro pose animation of Super Vegito when he lands the legendary finish. A bonus fact is the winner animation, it is the exact same animation as the sparking text when you pull them in a summon. There are many other things to talk about, for example, the English dub voice actor of Shallot and Nappa as commentators and the golden trophy of the red Super Saiyan Goku and other cool promotional extras. For the longest time, since the beginning of the game, a new banner introducing two normal sparkings who sometimes don't hold any relation to one another is usually called an Ultra Space Time Banner. Just before the second anniversary, they decided to hold the last ever Ultra Space Time Banner being Sparking First Form Cell and Heat Dome Trunks that being the 21st Ultra Space Time Summon banner. When the second anniversary finished, they introduced the first all-star banner which held the same format but instead used the Limit Breaker Boost system, where once you actually pull the feature unit, you can pay 2000 Chrono Crystals to unlock a mission plan to gain more Z-Power of the unit and the Z-Power unit of the respective color. At the time of this recording, we are currently at all-star banner number 15, being Goku Black and Mecha Freezer. With this pattern, we could see the All-Star Banner number 21 being around 5th anniversary time. So we could speculate another revamped, two-featured normal sparking banner coming out. Or not, Legends can be extremely unpredictable at times. Also since the start of the game were Legend Road units. Typically a free to play unit where you can max out their stats through offline grinding for them to reach meta status. The Legend Road units are, in no particular order, Kid Goku, Teen Trunks, Super Saiyan High School Gohan, Light Grenade Piccolo, Great Saiyan Man, Yardrat Goku and Base Gotenks. The only other free units at the time that was not a Legends Road unit was Spirit Bomb Base Goku, Broly, Titans Yamcha, Android 21 and Base Red Vegito. Along the way, Legends Road units stopped and event exclusive units replaced them. Side note, Legends Road units are included in the event exclusive tag, just in case you want a team build with the free to play units. Many people wonder why they removed the whole system of Legends Road, but I speculate they didn't want to look too shady. Legends Road characters were definitely a big thing. They were a complete new unit with new animations and they were free for anyone to use and grind. During the time, around two years deep, Legends really wanted to recycle units with a revamped kit and stats, basically a copy and paste unit. But of course, there will be outrage from the community for having a Legends Road campaign just to expect a recycled unit, right? So I believe they nerfed the marketing to event exclusives, having a lot of recycled units being released, and then they can do the occasional free to play unit with new animations. There is not too much to expand on this topic, but for casual players who did not know, Shallot is played by Kagi Films, mainly voice actor for other anime shows and a YouTuber. He is in a close friendship circle with many other famous Dragon Ball content creators and actors, so it was a no-brainer to have him voice Shallot. But with every YouTuber making almost daily content, honest opinions may spill out. 
as Kagi does show sometimes his annoyance to Dragon Ball Legends developing decisions. Around two years ago, we would get news of upcoming units from V-Jump scans. This is no longer the case as most likely the Western player base was bigger than they projected and decided to put in more effort for global marketing for upcoming releases to the game. Around second anniversary when Vegito Blue was released, he was the most anticipated character to come out for Dragon Ball Legends. It is safe to say the developers over delivered his kit during that time. He was the first unit to draw strike cards back to back while he had the broken stats. And that is just me scratching the surface about this character, as he overstayed his welcome where the community grew to hate his LF animation him being everywhere in ranked matches and his long combos. It became a meme where he was known as Delito Blue for a while, and the community from mid-2020 to late 2020 would always spam Gogeta Win, a meme giving homage to Vegeta Blue expecting the next unit to break the game. Legends and Stuff is an occasional YouTube video discussing updates and revealing new ideas to the game from the iconic staff. One very controversial game mode that was extremely hyped by the staff was Tournament of Power mode. To sum it up very quickly, as soon as it was released, nobody liked or cared for it till this day, and most veteran players only see it as a chore. Yo, I know we didn't do the typical intro at the start of the video, but this is the perfect time for you to really settle down because we still have six more tiers to cover. Also, I want to take this time to say thank you so much for watching this far already and being part of the Yaru G team. This video took so, so long to make, and as soon as this video is uploaded, I'm literally working on tomorrow's video. So I know it's so shitty to ask, but if you are willing and able, that thanks button is right there to support your boy and also shows an indication if you guys actually like these types of videos where I script, edit, and actually take my time with them. But yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. Even the casual player would know who Toshi is. He is the main producer and face for the Dragon Ball Legends development team. Because he is the face of the development team, he is widely memed upon by the community. Mainly from his drip clothing, hairstyles, many special gifts, and his rich lifestyle scamming all of our money in exchange for crystals. But there is a small misconception about him that the community may not know. He has stated a couple of times in his Legends and Stuff broadcasts that he is not 100% in control of the game's development. He is mainly the face of the development team. So he explicitly stated there are some ideas he would like to implement, but the higher ups won't let him. This isn't gonna be a part of the game. This is something that I asked one of the directors if we could do. It's like, what if we do a game mode where we can't pick our own characters? Or like, we pick the characters of the uh, enemy team. Um, yeah, yeah, he told me to. Uh, he told me to shut up and at least think <laughs> realistically. Yeah. <laughs> Another is that he acknowledges problems with the game, but unfortunately, as not being the top dog, he would need to go through so many people to actually get it done. So if you guys think Toshi is behind all of the problems, it is most likely not him, as you would notice from his interviews later in the Iceberg video. This is not an entry as significant as Toshi, but it is the unofficial, official tier list of Dragon Ball Legends. The community from the beginning days reflects upon what is currently in the meta during that time and would have their take on the tier list. Coming into 2023, this is no longer the case. Not as you may think. Game Press still updates their tier list occasionally, but the newly quick and heavy power creeps from the game seems to outpace the editors of the website. Now in the community, we see small memes using Photoshop or Inspect Element to create joke characters in God Tier. Of course, their popularity rose during the tier list hype video spike all around the internet in the 2020s, so it would be interesting to see what would come of this topic in 2023 onwards. Hyping up events is universal with every mobile game, but legends like to do a traditional riddle right before a reveal. This isn't something they do consistently, but it is always a treat in the community to try and solve who the upcoming units are. Of course there are too many hints released since the debut of the game, so here's a handful of the recent and iconic ones. 
Here is a wallpaper of Dragon Fist Base Goku with a small transparent text saying O1S. This was later revealed to be the unit ID code of LF Super Saiyan 4 Dragon Fist Goku. This was actually one of the lazy ones in my opinion. This one is the black background turning rosé coloured. No further words are really needed. This hint shows a pineapple with a very stylish hairstyle. Obviously hinting Maju. This hint here was a difficult one for average Dragon Ball fans. Particularly ones who did not watch the filler episodes. The image on the left shows King Kai's glasses, while on the other side shows West Kai's. In the middle shows a square battlefield, similar to the other world tournament, which putting them all together, hinted a Super Saiyan Kaioken Goku and Pycon. This is a different Pycon from the yellow one we already had, where he is in the movies tag, and this one was an anime originals tag. This hint was also sly showing a quite modest post achieving a sheer goal but the words surrounding the main text are java, meeting, deleted and smiling. Which makes you think at first but if you rearrange the letters you can get legends limited margin vegeta. This hint is also an easy one hinting super saiyan 3 gotenks. This was a recent one of ice cream with blueberries and a black spoon. This was just before Legends Festival 2022 and the fact it hinted extreme Omega Shenron was extremely disappointing. Next was an image of a blue circle turning light red which could have hinted a lot of similar things that happened in GT. This one hinted HAL 17's eyes when it turned red in one scene. Next is a PNG of leaves blowing through the wind. This seems vague but Dragon Ball fans know that it's the iconic scene of Pan and Dragon Ball Superhero. Next is a group of white clouds. Again seems to hint a lot of similar things but it hinted red Buhan. And lastly, for third anniversary, this hint showed Super Saiyan Blue Vegito's spirit sword compared to Merge Zamasu's purple beam sword. This was later revealed to be the purple sparking Super Saiyan Blue Vegito. There are currently around 26 episodes of Legends video and stuff officially. The first six featured Kagi Films, voice actor of Shellet, and Rhyme Style, unofficially retired but was a content creator of Dragon Ball Legends. This happened before the borders officially closed in Japan and ever since no other Western Dragon Ball Legends YouTuber has been featured in Legends and stuff. But recently there has been news that the Las Vegas Dragon Ball Legends showdown is coming back. This makes us believe that there hasn't been any international events because of COVID. Thus could hint that around 2023 onwards Toshi might actually feature some English speaking Dragon Ball Legends YouTubers in the future. This is a small community ongoing joke where Legends has delayed the release of Super Saiyan Blue Shallot for a very long time. It is the biggest time gap in between Shallot's transformations by far. This meme can rest easy once Super Saiyan Blue Shallot is confirmed but at the time of this recording it is not looking too hopeful. If you were to sum up the good things about Dragon Ball Legends gambling experience, it would be the summon animations. There are lots of summon animations with great fighting choreography, never seen before characters battling alongside each other, and their mysterious meanings. It is not confirmed by Legends stating what summons guarantees what type of summon you will get, but the community seems to get a good grasp on its meanings. There are many popular videos on YouTube just showing how hype summon animations can be, but Legends hasn't really dabbled around this to the extent the community wants it to. This game likes to keep a tradition on the 1st of April, sharing on social media a new big announcement. Unfortunately, this is an April Fool's joke. Despite the amazing design and creative 3D modeling, these are only joke concepts that will never be implemented into the game. But regardless, they were really fun concepts anyway and it is still a treat to look at. The first April Fools in 2019 was Nappa Every Day. 2020 was a driving test event where it looks like a Dragon Ball Legends Mario Kart collaboration with Post Boy Piccolo. 2021 was a Vegeta Takoyaki making event which is a reference to Battle of Gods. And 2022 was quite the switch up where there was an actual in-game event for this. The see if you can land even one punch on my face event was an actual event story you can play to hit Vegeta as trunks. He would have lots of vanishing gauges and you would need to trick him to land one attack. It is not actually that difficult. It is still something cute to do as there are no significant rewards by doing them. 
This is for the veterans of the game. If you can remember the old style of the title screen, there was a variety of characters that got shown. Specifically characters that were promoted and released on the launch date. So you would see a lot of Kid Gohans, Nappers and Android 18s type of art on the screen as well as their voice line saying Dragon Ball Legends. But what you didn't know is that the new title screen has less characters and less voice actors saying the Dragon Ball Legends line. Maybe it is time for a third big title screen update perhaps? There are cheaters in every online game. Dragon Ball Legends is no exception. To this day, there is cheaters, hackers, and lag switches, but the developers have been working hard to keep that to a minimum. The biggest issue at this time of recording is the matchmaking algorithm. There are many examples and methods to cheat in PvP, but one that was breathtaking for the community was the ability bonus hack, where a normal percentage for the ability bonus is around 3,000%, this was 12 million. And you guessed right, the player is unable to do even 1 HP of damage and just needs to forfeit or wait for their demise. This isn't something players would not know about, but it is still something mentionable. The first ever battle damage characters were Bardock, Fitku and Raditz. You can see this when they get hit by a blue card. After that, we have been getting many characters with battle damage outfits. With the recent release of alternate colors being a feature, this could hint that we could be getting alternate outfits for units in the game. It is debatable if this is an error or not, but let's break down Dragon Ball characters naming convention. As we all know, characters are named after food or everyday objects, Toriyama would add a twist on the name, such as Carrot being Kakarot, but saying Kakarot in Japanese, using the Japanese alphabet would be Kakarotto. Kakarot and Kakarotto are both technically correct, so when it comes to other naming conventions like Pycon and Kula, it gets a bit ambiguous. So they changed or quote unquote fixed the names to how it was originally in the West with past games. The drip meme is universal at this point on the internet, but it was born with Goku wearing the North Face Supreme jacket. Therefore, Dragon Ball fans feel a stronger sense of identity when memeing about fashion. It is embedded into the Dragon Ball Legends community too, where any unit in a different outfit or costume gets made into a unit will become the drip variation. Taking Drip Ku for example. Only the veteran players will remember this game mechanic. Dragon Ball Legends started off with only a level 1000 cap, meaning they had plans of an expanded level and soul boosting system later on, but would overcomplicate and overwhelm the player since the game was still in its pitching days. So if you grew up with the game since 2018, around every 6 to 9 months, the game would update raising the level cap, so you would need to train all of your characters once again just so you can play them in PvP. Luckily, it has been over two years since the 5000 level cap and it seems like there is no plan to raise the level even further. Social media is a great way to hype a celebration in a mobile game. Definitely when there is a daily countdown to such a celebration. Around two years ago, there was a big leak in the Apple App Store showing promotional advertisements for the celebration before it actually happened. This was days before the reveal and the community already seen official art of Jiren and Ultra Instinct sign Goku. It is still unknown to this day whether this was intentional or not. Most likely not as it happened again for the 4th anniversary leaking the free to play margin Vegeta. There was definitely some sort of miscommunication with the time locking system for the app store but what it did to the community was insane. Mostly for meme purposes there has been so many Apple leak photoshops of fake units coming to the game which of course lead to many people being misinformed or unaware of the joke. Do not take any leaks personally until it is officially confirmed. Don't even trust your favorite YouTuber. This is a small fact but can be easily missed. The purple Super Vegito is definitely a fan favorite and could possibly be considered the most iconic unit. His special move, Big Bang Attack, is really not a Big Bang Attack. Seen by the animation, it is a beam rather than an actual Big Bang Attack ball. Why did they do this? Even though during this time we had a Super Vegeta with the Big Bang Attack, with the accurate animation? Well, we may never know. 
Beerus was one of the first characters to come out in a banner, meaning he didn't come out during launch. And he was really bad. So bad the developers for the first and last time gave him a huge buff for free and converted him into a Legends Limited character. With this feedback, it is actually quite funny. The next LA villain to come out was First Form Freezer and he came out really good day one. If you are a veteran in Dragon Ball Legends, you would know the developers are very quick and happy to perform damage control. But once it becomes peaceful again, they are back to their toxic ways and tries to do something sneaky. Every character as default has level 2 card draw speed. When the card draw speed debuff is applied, it actually takes that speed to level 1 or 0. Similarly, when a plus 1 card draw speed buff is applied, then the actual card draw speed is increased to level 3 or 4. So what everyone calls level 1 card draw speed is actually level 3 card draw speed. Atlef Goten and Teen Gohan are the only two characters without a unique Atlef windscreen, probably because they were the first two Atlefs. Beerus at the time was not a Legends Limited unit and thus did not have an Atlef animation until later updated. Also at the time of this recording, there are still some players complaining about the Dragon Fist Super Saiyan 3 Goku that his animation is a copy and paste of the summon animation. This is slightly true, but a lot more effort compared to what we could have had if they had a Dragon Fist Goku in early 2019. The tackle system has been nerfed since the beginning of the game and that is actually a good thing. At the time of this recording we have the sidestep or charge step technique during our combos where we can charge up or restore some vanish in between our cards. But in the early days of the game there was a strategy where you could use the tackle in between each card which extended the time of the combo a little bit too long. This was officially nerfed by the development team and if you were to try this now you would meet an ending tackle that just pushes the enemy to mid range. In the community there was a story slash event Gogeta you could play years ago that was not an official unit you could obtain. This Dragon Ball Super Broly Super Gogeta was just like every Gogeta we had but had a very unique blue card that had incredible animation. This led to the community to ask why this is not an official unit we could obtain and play as normally. After two and a half years later, Legends finally made him an official free to play unit but with every free to play unit would not last long in the meta and become a fossil once again. Speaking of unobtainable units becoming real, Zaha and Saiyan in Red has been officially released to every player for Legends Festival 2022. Even though they were units we could play in story mode since 4 years ago, the game design is not that good as the currency to level up those units is gated by summoning. New mechanics are always being introduced into the game, which is definitely good in the long term, despite player opinion. One noticeable mechanic that hasn't returned since is the transformable unit with an ultimate card. Purple Super Saiyan Broly that transforms into full power Broly was iconically named one of the Holy Trinity. One reason being that he was one of the strongest units in the game, even without his Bardock buffs. With that being said, he is the only unit that can use his main ability to transform and used again to draw an ultimate card. Why was this mechanic never used again? Was it too broken? No hype characters on that level yet? We may never find out. If you read the passives of units released in 2018 and 2019, you will notice they all have a small side note next to them, basically giving a TLDR of the kit. This was later removed as passives now are a little bit too complicated to give a one sentence summary. Extreme Barris was the last to have one of these being called Pride Blast Attack Up. For old players of the game, do you remember this Android 18? There was something definitely strange about her. Nothing about her kit or the unit itself, but how she was released. If you did not know already, Legends occasionally releases filler banners with no new characters throughout the year. The purpose was to try to get the unit again after the initial banner finished. But for some odd reason, this Android 18 was released on a filler banner called Legends Androids alongside Red Perfect Cell and Purple Android 17. This was the first and the last time this special occasion ever happened.
Regardless if you play the game in English dub or in the Japanese dub, you will realize specific units say different lines if you match them with a specific opponent. Some are canon, such as Jiren vs Goku, but some are cheeky easter eggs, such as Gogeta Super Saiyan 4 vs Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta. Let's settle this once and for all! Super Saiyan 4 or Super Saiyan God? When you think about Legends, you don't really think it covers the grand scope of the whole franchise of Dragon Ball. It is more like a niche within the Dragon Ball fanbase demographic. So Dragon Ball figures that pay tribute to the unit art poses really makes us happy. This is not confirmed information, but from my research, this is about 90% of the Legends figures that were made. Gotenks, Yellow Super Vegito, not the Ultra one, Red Super Saiyan Goku, Purple Trunks that transforms into Super Saiyan, Legends Road Yardrat Goku, Yellow Future Gohan, Yellow Goku Black, Volume 1 collection containing Super Saiyan Goku, Super Saiyan Shallot, Super Saiyan Purple Gotenks, Red Super Saiyan Trunks, Yellow Kid Gohan, Blue Super Saiyan Bardock, Volume 2 collection having Super Saiyan 3 Purple Goku, Red Margin Vegeta, Blue Base Gogeta that transforms into Super Saiyan, Purple Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, Yellow Freezer, and Blue Krillin. And lastly, Volume 3 has Super Saiyan God Charlotte, Super Saiyan God Giblet, Blue Super Saiyan Blue Goku, Purple Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, Green Buhan, and Blue Android 18. Again, I want to say this might not be all the figures that officially collaborated with Legends, but definitely ones you can buy at the time of this recording. If you don't live in Japan, then you must have only been exposed to the Western promotions for the Legends Festival 2021. But in Japan, they made a commercial promoting Legends Festival and their Aleph units. It was said that only the community made Blueberry Boys overshadow Sword of Hope trunks, but even the commercial seems to think they are more hype. And yes, this is the closest thing we will get to Shotgun Farmer and Dragon Ball Legends. If you did not know already, really important games, even mobile, have their own dedicated YouTube channel. You would think this would be the case for Dragon Ball Legends as well considering they do Legends videos and stuff on a very consistent basis, but sadly all of their official content is pulled together with all the other Bandai Namco promotions. So you would see 5 of the same Legends videos and stuff in different languages and 51 piece Japanese commercials in between. What you didn't know is that with all these videos uploaded on that channel, specifically 8688 videos under numerous franchises, the Dragon Ball Legends 2018 trailer still stands at number 1 with 18 million views. So that is a small taste of the potential hype Legends could have been. I think you guys can notice differences in gameplay between the years, even small changes. What you may have forgotten was the camera being zoomed in at the start. 2018 gameplay shows very small space around your character, but this was later changed when bigger characters like Merge Zamasu became units. Broly was a day one unit, so I am not too sure why they made this change in the first place unless they really wanted the size of characters to be really accurate. This is not a big fact, but something that would go over a lot of people. The day one green piccolo is not accurate to its character art. His art shows him wearing his turban and cape, but his actual character model does not show any of it. And weirdly enough, the later blue hell zone grenade piccolo with the character art showing no turban and cape has the character model with it on. So I guess this is an extremely small mistake the devs made, but so small enough it's not even worth fixing. The Dragon Ball Legends intro is debatably one of the best Dragon Ball game intros to date. If you analyze all of the characters that show up in the promotion, they, of course, are a unit in the game. Except for one. We still do not have a normal blue jumpsuit Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta form from the Margin Buu End of Z Saga. Granted, there is not a specific point of time in the canon story to depict and transform this type of Vegeta into a unit, but still it would be nice to see a free to play or even a 1% sparking Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. 
Can you tell the difference between Dragon Ball Z Super Gogeta and the Dragon Ball Super's Super Gogeta strictly on appearance? They are quite similar, right? The only way to differentiate them is looking at their vest color. Dragon Ball Z's Gogeta has orange, whereas Dragon Ball Super's Gogeta has yellow. This is quite confusing, but that is one notable difference. Now there is a small mistake in Legends in 2019 where Gotenks at around mid-2020 where he had the pass orange which was technically wrong. Only until they released their fourth Gotenks in the game, they decided to fix all of the Gotenks models to the correct yellow color. Kaba's art unit is technically wrong. Kaba is of course drawn correctly but in the background we have Vegeta. Doesn't look too wrong right? This is the incorrect outfit Vegeta should be wearing in terms of the Kaba we have for this unit. This Kaba is technically in the Universe 6 vs 7 saga and Vegeta has not worn this outfit yet while wearing Super Saiyan Blue. He wears it for the Goku Black arc which was straight after and he should have been wearing his Resurrection F outfit instead. While we are on the topic of incorrect art, here is Red Janemba. Everything looks alright for the main character art of course, but they always mess up something in the background. The Goku in the background should have been wearing a halo. It is a small mistake which not many people won't even see anyway, but it is still something cool to point out. If you also did not know, basically 99% of character arts have a background. You should check them out in Legend Space where you can look at each asset separate on the website. One of the best selling points of Legends compared to other Dragon Ball games, heck even other mobile games in general, was the real time PvP experience. Of course it is not perfect, but it is the closest thing to a mobile fighting game experience with just using your phone. This was of course a major talking point for Legends as this video demonstrates its online capabilities. People may have missed this video as it was created before the game was released and was in its pitching stage. There is undeniably over 100 Gokus in the game, but one comes to mind when we are talking about the most toxic Goku. There are many contenders when it comes to toxic characters such as Ultra Kao Ken Goku, MUI Goku, etc etc. But little do you know it is actually Super Saiyan Green Instant Transmission Goku. Your first reaction is probably of course he's not the most toxic, he can easily be one shot by any of the units in the meta. That is true, but look at the potential of toxicity he has if he were to get a Zenkai. He has the ability to draw a lot of blue cards and his instant transmission Kamehameha counters every move in the game. When I say every, I mean every single move in the game. Tap attack, ultimate, blast card, you name it. If the developers would dare to try to bring this guy back with a Zenkai buff and possibly even more broken passives, he would undeniably be the most toxic character in the game. Dragon Ball Legends Ask Stuff is a special Q&A segment where questions are directly asked to Toshi and he explains them further in detail. This was released during the Battle Hour event 2021 which many people may have forgotten or missed but there is some juicy information we may have not known about. A good example is Toshi's take on the charge step technique the community has grown to skillfully adapt into the game. And does anyone in the development team actually have a thing for Nappa? My favorite is definitely when Toshi was asked, will we be getting a new Legends Road characters instead of copy and paste free to play characters instead? He of course needed to say something professional, saying Legends Road units are special and take time, and we are currently Zenkaiing the old ones, so hold on tight. Definitely check out the whole video when you have time. There was an LF animation glitch in the game at some point, which is probably fixed by now. But if you manage to heal with a green card, just at the exact moment when an LF unit uses his ultimate, you would get something like this.
Legends has many unused assets, but the most popular one is the Super Saiyan Vegeta that was made during the early days of the game's launch. It could be seen official on YouTube ads and websites, but never actually shown in the game. This could be a scrapped day one unit of Super Saiyan Vegeta when he fought Beerus with the angry expression he has on the art, but this is all speculation. We may never know and considering how old this art is, it is very unlikely we will see this again for a free to play unit or something. This was not too long ago, but if you could remember, we had extreme unit Zenkais at one point. This was the free to play alternative when event exclusive units weren't being released monthly and Zenkais still costed Chrono Crystals. Yes, this was when Zenkais only came out in a banner with no free gauntlet event or missions. The whole appeal of the Zenkai extreme unit system such as Yellow Beerus was that free to play players can still put up a fight in the meta. Unfortunately, this will most likely become a discontinued game occurrence as Zenkais are now free and free to play units are being made very frequently. Extreme Purple Nail is definitely one of my favorite units in terms of animation, but I would not see him getting a Zenkai anytime soon. It is more likely he will become a sparking free to play unit with his copy and paste animations and under a different element color. An upside is that we could see some cool new legends art. This was deep in the community where basically everyone was getting shafted in banners and would find any way to help their rates go up. It would go as far as getting shafted early in a filler banner so their luck would be better when the hype banner comes out, just for the algorithm. One other method was the complaint form theory, which was discovered by one player who sent a long feedback letter saying the rates were too low and he lost a lot of money trying to pull the feature unit. Days after, he actually managed to pull the unit. This is of course a lot of barnacles in retrospect, but any form of effort put towards getting the feature unit was worth it for anyone. I personally did this myself for a video when Yellow Turles came out, and it actually managed to work. The complaint form had a section to fill in my player ID, so they know which account was getting shafted. But in 2022, I would not recommend anyone to do this. The feedback system will be spammed with shaft letters, and real feedback on the game will be overshadowed in the email for the developers to see, which is honestly more important. There was a small glitch in the game where you were able to abuse the percentage faint with Yellow Gotenks. For a while, you could have a 100% faint with him and it basically and literally broke the game. Fortunately, it is now fixed. It took them one year to fix it and you cannot pull this kind of tactic ever again. Since the release of Vegeta Blue in the second anniversary, people every official update would quote the meme, Gogeta win? paying tribute to Vegeta Blue because he was the first ultimately broken character and the character hype fits with it. So between 2nd anniversary and Legends Festival 2020 when Gogeta Blue was released, every single update or banner to come out would have a bunch of people spamming Gogeta win. It was amusing the first few times but you could imagine how annoying it would be if Gogeta Blue were to be released at a later time and fans would overuse this quote a little bit too long and a little bit too much. Many old fans will remember this because 2018 and 2019 were the golden ages for Dragon Ball Legends. The hype was incredibly strong, people have forgotten how big an influence Dragon Ball has on the world. KSI is known for being a big Dragon Ball fan, but him playing Dragon Ball Legends specifically for videos was special. He would make two Dragon Ball Legends videos of him playing PvP and of course, being one of the most famous YouTubers in the world has wailed out all of the characters. It is nice to look back and watch it till this day, just showing how many small changes Dragon Ball Legends made along the years. This is something probably only this is something probably only the Legends Twitter community will know about, but it is the hentai topic. If you know, you know. Specifically the 2020 era, every official post of the Dragon Ball Legends page will be filled with hentai replies. They don't mean anything, nor do they serve any purpose, they just love to post up hentai alongside their comments. It feels a little bit surreal considering none of the conversations or discussions in the Twitter threads 
comments on the hentai. It's definitely desensitized me. And it actually still happens to this day, so I would not recommend joining the Legends Twitter community if you made it this far without it. I think everybody knows how Zenkai works as a game mechanic. Unit becomes meta, falls off, ages for a while, developers perform Zenkai on the unit, gets buff and modern passives. Done. Well that wasn't always the case during the first year of the game. Before Zenkai's, we had character balance changes. This was back when the team building actually matters and the character list was extremely small. So updating stats and passives of certain characters so they can live just a little bit longer meant a lot considering it was free. Obviously once many many characters were released, they had an opportunity to rehash an old unit to be in the meta again but with a cost to a player now. A literal cost. When Zenkai's first came out, they were not free. They did not have any missions or battle gauntlets alongside them, which in retrospect made them aggressively broken. This was also during the time when people memed around calling the game Zenkai Ball Legends, because you could not win a PvP match without bringing out at least one busted Zenkai character. But as soon as Zenkais were made free, you would still need to put a decent amount of time and effort to really stretch it to be free. The power of Zenkais were not as strong as we hoped. Don't take me wrong, there are still current Zenkais that are strong and amazing like Alev Vegito, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, and Super Saiyan 4 Goku for example, but it kind of loosely created dud Zenkais, where they get revived into the meta, but ultimately cannot be good and dies once again. Actually falling to a worse fate considering we have yet to see a double Zenkai future. At the time of this recording, hero units still serve no purpose in the game besides filling up the character list. Of course there are exceptions like Hero Hercule, which you can use smartly in battle, big quotation marks on smartly, to beat your opponent. But it has reached a point now that hero units seem to serve no purpose in 2022, and possibly leading to 2023 due to their extremely low stats and redundant passives. It has been around 2 years since we have gotten a new hero unit, and we might possibly never see a new hero unit again. This topic is more like a cheeky small fact rather than a typical deep iceberg subject. You retard is an infamous quote in the English subtitles for Dragon Ball when Gohan appears behind Super Buu to show his strength and speed. Of course this isn't what Gohan said in the English dub, but in the Japanese version, what he said was just as rude as saying the R word. The Japanese language doesn't have explicit swear words that bans them completely on young shows, but they consider them as extremely rude. So the closest thing is over here, fool. If you read one of Gohan's passives, it directly makes a reference to that line. It applies the following effects to self when this character evades an enemy attack with a vanishing step, draws a special arts card, restores key by 30, plus 20% to damage inflicted for 10 time accounts, and increase card draw speed by 1. We have mentioned in this video before that all-star banners basically replaced the ultra space time summon banners. A special perk the old system had was giving out free 30 Z power for each multi you did. This is kind of like a small pity system for 1% sparking banners. The new system for all-star banners needed you to summon the future unit first and you can purchase a mission plan to get more Z power of them later. The old system gives you a chance to ideally get the future unit you want within 4 multis if you are lucky, or unlucky I guess, then you can Z power them up to your desired star level. Comment down which system you like better. It is not very often legends put in special effort in terms of animation to the game, so we are very grateful they added new animations for the rising rushes for some units. When some units perform a green card in the rising rush animation, they can do something new instead. You will only witness this if you play the English dub version of the game. The newest Broly at the time of this recording is the Purple Ultra Broly from the Z movie. This is the first new Z Broly since the Vic controversy where the original dub voice actor for Broly left. The new voice actor for Broly is the version you can fully hear in the Dragon Ball Super version played by Johnny Young Bosch. If you notice this Ultra Broly, you will notice that he is played by Johnny Young Bosch and Vic Mignogna. 
I guess they wanted to bring back Vic to immerse us with that nostalgic Z Broly feeling while his new actor just filled in some voice acting spots. This could show that the Vic voice clips aren't new and most likely reused or unused until now. Do you think they should have done this? Should they have gone all the way with Vic only and the unit has less lines? Or they should have went all the way with the new Broly voice actor? This very rare video shows footage of Toshi explaining and pitching the idea of Dragon Ball Legends to the public. Here you can see how passionate he was 4 years ago trying to really show the world how big and different Legends was to other mobile games at the time. Here are some notable quotes from the interview that kinda does not age well as the years come by. Where uh, in player input can be done uh, at an easy level where uh, it doesn't feel like you'll be outplayed easily by a high tier player. So in terms of 3D model making, yes, definitely when we're working with such a large and famous IP as Dragon Ball, we need to make sure that the, we can provide something that all fans can appreciate, meaning we can't simply just make a lackluster copy and paste uh, model, but rather we create uh, every character with their own unique features, with their own uh, distinct movements, so they're easily distinguishable from one another. Now you are in the deepest end of the iceberg where I would be surprised if you are not at least a little bit disturbed by one of the things listed here in tier 7. A good start is the community's small running joke of the 6 mode mechanic. It is a bit more popular in the Dokkan community to utter a small ironic joke concerning when the release of a 6 game mechanic will come out. There isn't really anything more deep than this. Because the Dokkan community is neighbors with legends, the joke reached there as well. Unfortunately, there is no foreseeable news of a 6 mode for legends or anyone willing to do a mod on it but a bonus fact is that someone on twitter actually made a 6 mechanic for dragon ball xenoverse 2 that is seriously not safe for work and if you want to research it please proceed with caution one of YouTube's biggest influencers right now, Speed, actually did a livestream of himself trying out Dragon Ball Legends. Sadly, because of Speed's personality and heavy request to try other games, he did not manage to play further than the first 20 minutes of the game. This is still great news, showing that out of all the games in the world to play, he played Dragon Ball Legends. At the time of this recording, he is a big football fan and his influence impacted a lot of young Americans to follow the World Cup. Which makes us think, what if, in an alternate universe where Speed managed to get hooked into Legends, how big would our community become if this 14 million subscriber YouTuber actually became an official Legends YouTuber? At the very start of the game's launch, there was a specific tag called Female Warriors. Fair to say that is self-explanatory. But later on, during the game's life, they decided to change it to girls. We have been officially told that that is the new tag name replacing female warriors, but we were not given a reason. The closest theory I can find is to make it sound easier for the Japanese version for the game. Originally, female warriors tag in Japanese was called Onna Senshi which was literally translated to female warrior. I guess in Japanese it was too literal considering they were going to release units like Varos and Pan so they decided to change it to girls and in Japanese Gyarus. For Legends Festival 2020 when the release of Gogeta Blue came out, Legends wanted to go very extra by doing a giveaway. You would think they are being really nice to do a giveaway? This big gotcha game giving away anything free is a blessing. What could it possibly be? Giving away Gogeta Blue to a lucky player? A Gogeta Blue special figure? No, a Gogeta Blue bath towel. Yes, we have no news who the lucky winner is who currently holds the legendary artifact but I hope he or she enjoys it. The famous American television host Conan O'Brien was seen actually playing Dragon Ball Legends in a segment during 2018. Of course this isn't really to showcase the game's articulate points and online mechanics, but to really bring it out to the public there is an easy to get official Dragon Ball phone game to fight anyone, anywhere, seamlessly. It is actually quite wholesome and funny to watch, I would recommend watching the whole segment. 
In the official Dragon Ball website, they are known for publishing news on Dragon Ball Legends as well as some cool trivia. One article that many people might miss is the story and the development of unit animations. The developers write down some notes explaining how much work goes into designing the strike, blast and ultimate animations of certain characters. For example, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. In Legends, his strike and blast attack animations have been carefully designed with Vegeta's fighting style in mind, being dexterous, efficient and refined. These aspects of his characters are even more apparent when juxtaposed with those of Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Goku. So try to have them battle in-game and see the differences for yourself. My favorite is definitely their small description on Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. His legendary finish animation shows off what becomes possible when you take the immense power of a great ape that's granted by Super Saiyan 4 and remove the downsides of a great ape form itself, resulting in a lightning fast and incredibly destructive attack. He starts off with some agile moves and strikes before transitioning into a 100 times Big Bang Kamehameha, combining elements of the scenes from the original series as well as new additions to create a supremely cool animation that no fan would want to miss. Dokkan Battle and Legends Joint Social Media Campaign Retweet this post and the one over at official Dokkan to contribute. At 20k global retweets or shares across both titles, we release a special smartphone wallpaper. Here is the wallpaper. Yes, I am as disappointed as you when I heard about a Dokkan and Legends collaboration. I'm glad it is this small to give me hope thinking we could actually get a real collab in the future. Something like making Shallot a Dokkan unit sounds very cool to me, and maybe for Legends, making that Goku and Gohan a unit in Legends with the Dokkan original animation. There are many things they could do with this collab, comment down your ideas. If you remember this, then you would know this will definitely never happen again. During the open beta for this game, players at the end of the content will be able to just replay the banner for fun. This is just to see how cool it would be to experience fully starring a unit or watching all of the summon animations. It was very neat and fun to watch. But as the title goes, unlimited summons was definitely true, but will also definitely never happen again. So I hope people who played the open beta in 2018, you made the most out of that. Fun fact, in Nanogenix's video, it also shows Turtle School Pupils as a category or tag for Legends. It takes a no-brainer to know that this is not a tag available in the game right now. There is a toxic message across the Dragon Ball Legends community called the LF Yaro G. It is still unknown who or what this Yaro G is, but we can all confirm it radiates some sort of big dick energy somehow. LF Yaro G is spammed a lot in official reveal live streams, which annoyed the community. This is the oldest Legends gameplay I could find that was officially released and labeled as gameplay. It is Goku vs Krillin and I would like you guys to take the time to analyze the small changes they made along the way to 2022. I am noticing a bigger camera shake in the strike animation and a completely different blast card animation. The vanish gauge looks thinner and longer as well. And we can all agree that changing hitting defense force up was a good idea. Okay, and I believe that is all I have for you guys today for Dragon Ball Legends Facts. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Veteran players in the community will most likely have a fact that isn't in this video, and I would love it for you guys to comment it down for me. Because I want to make a refined part 2 version of this in the near future, mostly around this time next year, so I'd love to hear any facts you guys have to share to the community. But with that being said, make sure to subscribe to me to get the best updates for Dragon Ball Legends, and I'll catch you in the next one, alright? Peace.